Flaunt is an acronym for Find Your Fetish, Laugh Out Loud, Accept Unconditionally, Navigate the Negative, and Trust in Your Truth. Above all else, trusting in our truth is what makes us feel grounded, centered, and sure of who we are. We no longer spin out of control, wondering if we have made the right decision, nor are we impacted by the judgment or beliefs of others. Learn how to let go of the need to please, how to stop being controlled by the fear of what other people might think and live life with certainty and joy. Trust Your Truth with Deb Goldberg and Laura Cheadle. Angel Heart Radio programs should not be used to replace your legal or medical advice, nor your own sound judgment. In truth, nothing can dim your magnificence. You are a divine spark, a universal light. You are here on purpose. You are part of a divine plan. And it's our joy to support you. We're here to celebrate you. Welcome to Angel Heart Radio. Powered by love, Angel Heart Radio is brought to you by angellight777.com. A divinely ordered life with spiritual teacher Deb Goldberg on Angel Heart Radio starts now. Oh my goodness. Welcome everyone to A Divinely Ordered Life on Angel Heart Radio. I'm your host, Deb Goldberg, and it brings me great pleasure to be here with you today. And it's an honor to serve you in the highest ways that I can by bringing you messages of divine love and blessings for your life. You are dearly loved and cherished. So welcome. We have a great show for you tonight. We have Laura Cheadle with us, and Laura is a former attorney, author, a life choreographer, and is a transformational thought leader and media personality who empowers women to find uninhibited joy and gracefully take control of their success and happiness, despite external circumstances. By cultivating a sense of naked self-worth, which is the ability to show up confidently and comfortably in all facets of one's life as they are, not as they think they should be. Women discover that who they are right now is more than enough. And her book, Flaunt, Drop Your Cover and Reveal Your Smart, Sexy, and Spiritual Self is available wherever books are sold. And she also has a podcast that you can listen to. Um, and we'll have Laura tell us all about that. And so welcome, Laura, to Thank Angel you. Heart Radio. Thank you, Deb. I am so honored to be here with you tonight. I am too. I, um, I'm so grateful when I get connections from my friends. And Dr. Lynetta Willis said, oh, you have to meet Laura. And so Laura and I did have a conversation before we got here to now. And I was just like, yes, this is the right thing to do. <laughs> and she's got such a great message. But Laura, I would really like you to start off with how did you get here? How did you get to where you are from a, an attorney and I believe a burlesque dancer to an empowerment coach? Absolutely. You know, like so many journeys, it was a little bit long and convoluted. It wasn't just point A to point B. Uh, the common denominator in all of the iterations that I went through, however, were that I lost a sense of myself. I grew up seeking to please. I, you know, in school, they give you the syllabus. They tell you what to do. You do it. You get your straight A's. You get your degree. You go to law school. You pass the bar. You get the job. You do what you're supposed to do in the right order. And I took great pleasure in pleasing because I wanted that acceptance. I wanted to be praised, to be seen and recognized for being the good little girl. And that worked for a while. But then at some point I started realizing this isn't exactly who I am. 
and I'm spending a whole lot of time and energy filling these roles that aren't exactly me. And I ended up leaving the practice of law after I had my second child. And I was a stay at home mom for quite a few years, which was wonderful. But again, I had some struggles around my identity because if I was no longer a lawyer, then who was I? And was I worth anything? And I became their mom and his wife. And I defined myself with all of those external things around me, the success of my kids, the cleanliness of my house, all of that stuff. And then again, at some point I started realizing, wait, 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 this isn't me. And that is when I found burlesque. I grew up dancing. I was like so many little girls, ballet, jazz, tap. I was a pom-pom in high school and college. And I love dance, but it was one of those things that I put aside because lawyers don't do that. Moms don't do that. I can't take the time or the money away from my family to pursue this silly little hobby of dance. And it wasn't until I was 44 that I reconnected with that through dance. And I started realizing the power of taking care of me and allowing myself to do things that I enjoyed, not to have a better house, not to have a better job, not to have more successful kids, but for me, because my heart and my soul told me that I wanted to dance. And through just so many different experiences in my life, that same message kept coming up and kept coming up and kept coming up. And I started working with other women. I actually went back to school after I left law and I became a hypnotherapist and an angel reader. And I started doing energy work and I started working with other women and I found out the experiences that I had were not unique to me. Mm -hmm. So many other women had lost their sense of self and their ability to trust in who they were. They were always doing things to please others or to avoid judgment or, and then they would find out it was too late. And another impactful moment happened when my brother-in-law passed away at a young age, leaving his three little kids alone. And it just really made me realize the time is now. Sometimes we're not granted later. We really need to step into our truth, trust what spirit is calling us to do and to simply live. Or like how I like to say sparkle. We all sparkle when we step into that naked self-worth and just authentically and vulnerably be exactly who we are. What a beautiful story. That's great. And it's so true. And, and I believe you're right. I think that most women have gone through that. Um, I know I have, especially, um, you know, you, you come from your parents' home and they have expectations. And then, well, you have your own expectation just from society of what society tells you should do at a certain age too, right? Yeah. And then, um, and then, you know, when you should get married, what, what age, when you, when you should have a child, what kind of work you should do, what kind of house you should live in. So you have all of these expectations and they, you're right, they don't fall in line with a lot of times what our natural um, needs are or what our wants are, our desires. Yes. And even around our bodies, mm -hmm. you know, we need to be a certain size. We need to be a certain shape. We need to have no gray hair, no crow's feet. We need to look a certain way. And for most of us, it's not realistic. You're right. It's not realistic. No. <laughs> you keep trying to morph into something that you're not to keep up with some outside appearance of, um, 
of programming from outside of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. And then we start focusing on all the wrong things. We start saying things to ourselves like, I can't go to the pool with my kids. I can't wear that on the beach. I can't go out because I have 20 extra pounds on me. I can't. Well, all we do then is hurt ourselves. We are not fully engaging in life, whether it's relationships or showing up or doing things. We have all of these stories built up around, well, I have to lose the weight first. I have to have the relationship first um, and not until my kids get older. Well, once I make partner, well, once I find a new job and all we do is delay, 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 and then we've never lived. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're right. Yeah, I remember making all kinds of excuses, um, like time, like just to even go to the gym, especially yeah. when I had, you know, younger kids. And then I was working all the time. And, you know, work was a priority for me. I was a workaholic for a long time. And, uh, and so yeah, I was like, I don't have time to that to do that. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for all these little things that I thought would be helpful to myself or that I was longing to do for whatever reason. Uh, and, and I still actually, um, I love to dance too. And uh, so I know that for me, and, I, and when you dance, it lets loose your creativity, right? Yes. All kinds, right? And you, oh, you could yeah. talk about, the, I want you to talk about what you learned from bur burlesque because, I mean, I don't do burlesque dancing, but I do different types of dancing and I feel like the creativity comes out of me. Yes, it absolutely does. And that's, you know, that's an interesting thing too. Most people like to dance. There's really not a kid out there who doesn't like recess and running around. Every single culture out there they dance and they have music. Rhythm is actually something that's unique to humans. We are the only animal out there that has rhythm and that can keep that beat. It's a way that we express and we celebrate and our emotions move through us and we all love to dance. But sometimes we get confused in our brain that I should work out and that I have to stay in shape. And then all of a sudden, we again deny ourselves that pleasure of movement and running and jumping and playing because we've spun it into i have to go to the gym now i have to work out instead of yes i get my hour of recess time every day because i'm an adult and i will treat myself to that joy what a great way to look at that is yeah. that it's it's fun it's not like i have to do it because i'm maintaining something it's um because it's fun and yeah and and that's a much better attitude ab about that and you know what we talk about the dancing um and burlesque and you have a great book called flaunt right yes it's ca called flaunt drop your cover and reveal your smart sexy spiritual self and uh so why don't you talk about your book because you use the techniques of burlesque as a way to help people get naked yeah. in a sense <laughs> absolutely oh i could talk about burlesque all day yes first of all everything you said about dance yes dance is a way that we process emotion mm -hmm. emotion and energy gets all bottled up inside of us and it needs to move through and you know we can sob to release energy we can laugh to release energy we can cry to release we can do all of these things but dancing is a way that we can process emotion and like I just said, it's, it's innate. It's innate to our bodies. So let's use that as a tool. And burlesque, for people who might not be familiar with burlesque, it comes from the root word burla, which means mockery or parody. And it's not stripping. The removal of clothing is done in part. It's not a nude, a totally nude thing, but it's a removal to surprise and delight and to show people what's underneath. That's that mockery. That's that parody. You know, we all wear uniforms in the day, whether it's like a doctor's uniform or scrubs or a suit and tie, our power suit, mom jeans. Those are all uniforms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So burlesque will make fun of that. What is under the power suit? 
what is under, you know, that, and it's that curiosity and that playfulness because we all put on different personas throughout the day. And when we come home, we take our clothes off and we go, ah, and we're authentically and vulnerably ourselves. So that's why I love the analogy of burlesque because it's a burlesque every day. Every day that you get up and think, I don't want to do this, but you put on that power suit and your lipstick or whatever it is, and you power through, that's a burlesque and, it, and it's funny and it's humorous. And then when we strip down, what are we left with? And when we look at people in our world, we can think that same thing underneath that grouchy exterior. There's a hurt person. Mm-hmm. You know, underneath that confident, powerful person, gosh, <laughs> they could be having a really tough, they could have a partner at home on chemo. We don't know. Mm-hmm. And it's looking at what is underneath and getting to that heart and exposing that. And that's, that's powerful. It is. It is very powerful. And that's what we're all here to do. And it's really, it's really amazing that um, we've all learned to put this costume on. We've all learned to put on these clothes. And it sort of, it kind of goes back to that, you know, I'm not a religious person or, um, but it goes back to that story of Adam and Eve where all of a sudden they were naked in the garden, right? And they felt, they felt like, they felt shame and they had to put everything goes back to there of like, okay, so we put this really heavy duty costume on and, and also let the experiences of life freeze our heart. Yes. Cut, you know, make it really uh, like we in so much protection over our heart. And then the whole spiritual awakening process is really undoing all of that, right? Yes, it is. It is. And I love that you had mentioned that whole Adam and Eve and shame piece because we're all, we're all naked. (laughs) We're all just bodies. And there's so much taboo built up around, ah, you might see a certain body part for a certain reason. And ah, and then with the heart, There's shame and taboo around, you know, men can't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't want to be weak. A woman can't be emotional. There's all these taboos around what we can and can't do. But underneath it all, we're all wounded. (laughs) We're all vulnerable. We're all naked. And we don't look like the models in the magazine and the people on TV. That's Mm -hmm. not real. Right. And as you're talking, you know, I, I look at this as a human condition. It's not just women. Men have right. learned how to be too. Men have learned that, you know, they had to be the breadwinner and that they have to be a certain way, um, being macho maybe or manly and that, you know, crying or something is just not or or pursuing their their interests. Because yes. they're so busy providing or doing the things the way that their father did it or their grandfather did it. And, and so this is, this is really a human condition. Yeah, it really is. One of my favorite stories, I was at a book signing and there was a gentleman that just kind of kept walking around on the outside. And then at the end, when I was signing books, he brought the book over to me and he said, I'm, I'm getting this for my wife. And I said, wonderful. What's her name? I'll sign it to her. And he paused and he said, I'm just going to be honest. The book is for me. (laughs) Sign it to me. (laughs) That's great. And then so he was able to come forth and be naked, right? (laughs) (laughs) Because you're right. It is the human condition. We Mm -hmm. all live up to expectations. We all try to fill roles. We're all stereotyped. And it really can be tragic. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah we we are we can be a stereotype yeah and then you're not using your unique gifts you haven't found the treasure inside of yourself I know for me getting awakened by um, Jesus and God that's what made me realize oh there's a lot more going on here than just living this life that we're doing every day and 
yeah, that there's there's more to you than you understand. And so, um, and everybody wakes up to that in a different way. Mm-hmm. Right? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. And that's kind of why I intentionally chose the word smart, sexy, and spiritual in my title, because until you're really woken up to the fact that you can be a lot of different things, most people think if you're spiritual, you look one way. You are either, you know, a crazy religious person or you're this woo-woo spiritual person. That's it. Mm -hmm. Or you're sexy and you're easy and you're not a good mom and you're, you know, all of these negative things, especially about women. Or you're smart and you have a chip on your shoulder and you're not very caring and you're not nurturing and you know, you're, you're a workaholic and we have these very rigid boxes, but you know what? We're all, all of that. Mm -hmm. And we can, it's not mutually exclusive. We can be all of that Mm -hmm. all at the same time. And we can also have our own flavors within that. Great. That's, that's great. Because yeah, we, we have the abilities to all have all of those aspects and character traits um, within each one of us and be that at different times. And we're still a whole person. Yes. We're still a whole person, right? With that whole, all of that diversity going on inside of us. But if you're, like you're saying, if you're not in touch with your, your, your heart's desire, your soul's yearning, you're really missing out on passion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's that real meaning. It's that, I call it the uninhibited joy Uh because most of us inhibit our joy. You know, whether it's the belief that, oh, if it feels good, it's gotta be wrong. (laughs) Or that belief that we're lazy or that we're not good enough, or that we have to do something in order to get that joy. You know, how many times do we say, you have to do this first, clean your plate before you get dessert. It's that kind of a mentality. And we really have to look within and find out who am I being called to be? What are my gifts? What are my joys? Because it's my belief that life is beautiful and joyful. And we are here to take that uninhibited joy and to feel good. You know, a soul isn't going to come to earth and say, I sign up for misery. (laughs) It's to be here to experience. We're in bodies. Let's have as much joy and connection and fulfillment as we can. And the only way to do that is to really trust in your truth, to trust in what you know to be true. And even in the intro to this show, you know, when you say it's not medical advice, it's not legal advice, even in the intro to show, it's trust your own good sense. And that is not necessarily the own good, own good sense of somebody else told me to watch out for this. It's what feels right. Because I also firmly believe that we're all intuitive. Intuitive is not a magical woo-woo thing. We all have that gut feel. We all have that ability to know If somebody feels right or wrong, if a decision feels good, or if we're doing it out of spite, we all know the right things to do and the right reasons to do them. But it's only when we tune within and just sit with who we are, can we hear that calling of our heart, that wisdom of our soul or whatever it is that you want to call it coming through that is guiding us into a life that is filled with joy. And that's where that real meaning comes in and where authentic connection comes in with other people. When we have that ability to have that discourse and that exchange from a soul level, not just on this fake news, you said this, I said this, well, I believe that but a real human connectedness level, that's meaningful and that's powerful. And humans want connection and we crave connection, but we can't get it if we're covered up. Because if I'm always posturing and making you think that I'm different and wanting you to think that I'm smarter and better and blah, 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 and you're doing the same for me, how can we ever meaningfully connect? That's so true. 
That's so true. Because you're so busy trying to be who you think others want you to be or who you need to be so that other people like you or love you. Mm -hmm. And and that's what we're trying to undo, all of that stuff. So I really love your, your talking about trusting your own truth. Um, and I know that for me, it took me a long time to even understand what that was because I didn't trust my own self and what my emotions were or my feelings or I denied them or is it right or is it wrong and so I would go through this whole gamut of of trying to say okay well this is coming up but I don't know if I can trust it I don't know if it's my ego or if it is my genuine natural uh, spirit inside that's that wants me to do something and it's, it took me a long time to weed through that because I spent so much time um, pushing down my feelings and not giving my feelings any credibility because I, did, I didn't know how to do that. It's kind of the way I was raised. And then, you know, for 56 years, I didn't do that until Jesus was like, hey, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with your feelings, Deb, and you need to start feeling them instead of living in numbness or or being so focused in what I was doing and loved it that I, I focused on that and nothing else. Mm -hmm. So maybe you want to talk a little bit about how, how people can start really listening to their, their own desires and their intuition. Yes, absolutely. And I'm glad that you shared what you did because the first part of my book is called Recognize and Release. And I start with the childhood and I just have some childhood self-reflection stories. Reflect on the things that you were taught. Try to get out of the idea of this is good or this is bad. Just think about the things that you were taught, whether it's from your parents or your teachers or your culture or your religion, whatever it is, just think about some of the things that you were taught. And then compare that to when you're an adolescent, because adolescents kind of try to push away from their parents. They try to push away from their families and they try on some different identities. And for the first time, they're aware that, oh, there's another way to do it because we're only raised in our family. That's all we know. And then as adolescents, our world broadens. So the whole first part of my book and what I challenge listeners to do right now is to just spend some time reflecting on some of the things that they were taught and that they believe. And then just ask themselves gently without agenda, is that belief true for me? One thing that came up for me that was a really difficult thing to balance was when my kids became young adults, the idea of how do they go from being kids to being adults. And part of that transition is be stepping into their sexuality. And how do I come to terms with my beliefs about how to be healthy and confident in yourself versus what the culture says versus how I was raised? And how do I overcome my discomfort talking to them about things that, oh, we shouldn't talk about because we're where I really needed to be the competent, calm source of real information and connection. And that was hard because there's a lot of emotion around that. There's a lot of charge around that. Same thing with politics, same thing with religion, same thing. Challenge yourself on some of those beliefs where you go, oh, I can't do that and just see where they came from and see what is truly true for you now and see how it would feel to let that go and to choose what feels really good for you. And what I like about doing that and just asking people to explore that and to think about it is I'm not asking you to make any big shifts in your life. I'm just asking you to think what if that weren't true? 
Just explore how that would feel. What if it weren't true? What if the world, the way you knew it, was not true? Just explore that. And that's that recognizing and then releasing or choosing to keep what works for you. It's an untangling that we can all have different beliefs and you can be very centered and grounded in your beliefs and I can be very centered and grounded in my beliefs and those beliefs can be entirely different and that's okay. That's a great point. That's a great point because I believe everybody has their own truth. Yes. And, and, um, and so somebody else doesn't have to be wrong for you to, your truth to be right. That yes. they're all right, right? Yes. Yeah, that, that everybody's on their own unique journey. So, um, so what doesn't resonate for you, it's okay. Mm-hmm. And that's also kind of what you're talking about is being standing in your own uh, naked truth, right? Yes. Is yeah. that even if everybody else disagrees with it? It's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I can still honor other people's. A story that I talk about in my book is when I was leaving work. I had an in-house position in a major insurance company. It was, you know, the perfect job. It was the job that everybody wants and it was perfect. And I left to stay home with my kids. And my last day of work, I had one of the female attorneys come up to me and say, how dare you do this to working women everywhere. You're giving us all a bad name. You're pandering. You're going to go let your husband support you. You're... And I mean, she just lit into wow. me. Yeah. And it was like, yes, I hear everything you were saying. And that is very true. And it's very true for you. And I don't need to explain all the reasons why Me choosing to make this decision at this point in my life is also very true for me. And yes, I did fight hard to get here. And yes, it's a good position. And it's a yes, and it's a yes. Mm -hmm. It's not a right or wrong. But my truth at that moment was that I very much needed and wanted and chose to leave that behind to be with my kids. And there were consequences that I faced because of it, you know, losing my identity, suddenly standing in a cocktail party going, I'm just a mom. (laughs) And there were decisions and consequences I'm sure she faced in her choice as well. But the fact is, it was both of our truth and it was both of our choice. And it was up to us to stand confidently in that and to own it for right or for wrong, for good or for bad. And during that time, making that decision, that was also something, of course, I consulted with other people. Of course, I I read books about it. I talked to people. But ultimately, it was my decision. I had to go within and sit and decide and own that truth. Right, right. It's really your heart's desire. It is, it's your heart's desire saying, okay, something just shifted, something changed, and now my direction is someplace else. Mm-hmm. And it could be totally different, right? It, it's totally. totally opposite of what you did. But all of a sudden, your heart starts pulling and saying, no, I think this is really what I want to do. And, and really, I think being a mom's the hardest job that there ever could be, oh and regardless of what you do out in this world, that being a mom is the hardest job, um, and and it's it's the most rewarding job. But you don't always get the you don't get the um, acknowledgement for no. for that job. No, you absolutely don't. And there's a section too, I just grabbed my book, but I don't see it right off the bat. There was a part in the book where when I first started dancing burlesque, I thought in my head, people are going to say all these things. They're going to say, that's weird that you want to do that. Why do you want to do it? How, how dare you? And I go through like this list of all these things that I thought other people would say about what I was about to do. And then in reality... Nobody said any of those things. (laughs) And that's just what you were talking about, you know, with your truth. 
we get so wrapped up in our heads sometimes. What's someone going to say? What I bet they're going to say this, and then I'm going to say this, and then they're going to do this, and then they're going to think that, and da, da, da. and we have this whole conversation and dialogue going on in our head, and then we make decisions based on it, and it never even happened. It just was within our own head, mm-hmm. and it was our fear and our ego yeah. popping up. Yeah. And, and so people don't always realize that there's another voice, <laughs> this <laughs> ego voice that's always there. I didn't know it until Jesus woke me up. And I was yeah. like, I was really mad. I'm like, you mean I've been living with this voice for 56 years and nobody told me that there's an ego? <laughs> yes. <Start it. laughs> yes. So, yeah, there's this voice that's always trying to play it safe and protect you. And it really keeps you from, um, even though it's a protector, it's, it keeps you from really going in and inside yourself and doing your heart's desire that yes. you get into that. You know, I wanted you to talk about your five-step process of FLAUNT, because FLAUNT's an acronym. Yes. Oh, I would love to. Yes. It, the five steps of flaunt all lead to the ability to trust in your truth. Because I know, Deb, like we're talking about things and, you know, it's like, yes, my heart's open and I get it. And it's so easy to hear that, I think, sometimes intellectually and be like, yes, I can do it too. And then push comes to shove and we go, oh, that's scary. How do I do it? H- how do I really separate it? And that's what the five steps of flange are really designed to do. They're to help you tune within and start every single day doing these little steps that will get you to the point of trusting your truth. So the first one is find your fetish. And I love that because fetish is such a naughty word and it makes everybody go, oh my gosh, what are you talking about? (laughs) But if you really look at the definition, it's like Dumbo's feather. Dumbo believed his feather gave him the ability to fly and it didn't, the ability was within him all along, but he needed that feather. And that's one of the definitions of fetish. And we can find our fetish too. We can find that thing that empowers us. And that thing that empowers us is usually something that we really enjoy and we really love. I talked about recess earlier in the show. Mm -hmm. Kids play for the sake of playing. They don't play to prove anything. They don't play to get better. They don't play. They just play because it's fun. Mm -hmm. And that's what our finding our fetish is. It's about finding that thing that is just joyful and fun for us because it will, like the feather, elevate us and lift us and it will make us know and feel and understand how powerful we are. And then the L is the next step. And that stands for laugh out loud. And I had said that earlier too, laughter and tears are both cathartic. We release through crying and through laughing. And if you really go down to the mechanics of it, sobbing and hysterical laughter are the same biomechanics. Our eyes are tearing. We're doubled over. Our face is squished up. We can't breathe. We're convulsing. And I don't know about you, but I would rather be doubled up in laughter, Mm -hmm. unable to get my breath, (laughs) than racked with sobs. Mm -hmm. And when we are constantly choosing laughter, I mean, God is funny. The universe is funny. Everything is funny and light feel. That's why it's love and light. It's light and it's laughter. And when we choose to focus on what's funny, we can, we can have an experience happen and we can laugh at it, or we can scream and get angry and kick things. <laughs> and I'd rather laugh. It's, it, it provides that physical relief and it's mentally much healthier. And we can choose laughter every day, whether it's finding memes or a video on YouTube or calling a friend or reading a book, choose a little bit of laughter every day, just a little bit. AU is the golden center of flaunt because that's where that turning point happens. And AU stands for accept unconditionally. You know, there's that whole prayer, the serenity prayer about knowing what we can control 
and releasing the rest. And quite honestly, there's really nothing we can control except ourselves. And the only thing we can really control within ourselves, because we can't even control our health and a lot of things about us, is our attitude and our beliefs and what we choose to focus on. And when we don't accept unconditionally, the only person we hurt is ourself. Because how many times have you or anybody out there, how many times have we played this game in our head? This time it's going to be different. This time I'm going to say this and they're going to say that. This time my boss is going to give me a promotion. This time my mom isn't going to do this to me. This time my spouse, it's not true. The only thing we can do is accept unconditionally that things will happen and that people will act the way they've always happened. And then we need to decide how we are going to respond. If I act this way, he'll treat me nice. No. If I give this to her, she'll be really nice to me and then she will. No. Accept unconditionally everything about yourself and about everybody else and then and only then will you know the next step to take. It's like having the location set on your GPS starting in California when you're really in Florida. The directions are valid, but you're not in the starting place. The only way to get to your starting place is to accept unconditionally where you are, which flows right into that next step, the N, which is navigate the negative. And I do not believe there's anything negative. I believe things are just things. They are what they are. And we have to navigate. If we have a destination in mind, sometimes we go over, sometimes we go under, sometimes we go around, sometimes we go through, sometimes we backtrack and wait. Just navigate. It's that accept unconditionally. Get out of the emotion of it and just go. I, I often tell people, if you were driving home and there was a roadblock or you know a horrible storm or a blizzard, you wouldn't just get out of your car and say, oh, it wasn't meant to be. I'm never going to get home again. You navigate, you take the detour, you wait it out. It might take you three hours to get home, but you get there. You can be frustrated, that's okay, but just navigate it. <laughs> and when you can do those four things and implement them in your life, then suddenly you find that you're trusting in your truth because you're out of the emotion, you're out of the right, wrong, good, bad, and you're centered in your heart, in your spirit, and you can breathe and be calm and know that you've got this because no matter what, you're honest and you're connected and you trust in your truth and everything flows better. And suddenly all of that meaning and that purpose that you've sought your entire life is there. Yeah, those are great steps. They're awesome. Thank you. And as you're talking, I'm like, yeah, these are, these are great steps, um, but they are a process. Yes. They're, they're a process, um, right? That we're taking baby steps every day yes. to, to um, walk those steps, right? Yes. And, and that's exactly it. It's a process and it's a practice. And some days they're really, really good. And then sometimes things happen, you know, yesterday kind of went off the rails for me. And that's okay because that's part of the navigation. Things didn't happen that I wanted to happen. And I get a whole new day to day. And I'm implementing more things today. And it's a better day. And it's all okay. It's just that I know where my heart is, where the focus. I know those, you know, those five steps. I know to do those four things and that I can stay in my truth. And I can breathe. And when I'm trusting my truth, I trust that even when things aren't the way I expect, it's okay. Because I know what to hold on to. And what to hold on to is that truth inside of me. And that never changes. The world can fall apart around me. Relationships, people, things can all fall apart around me. But no matter what, I have that truth inside. My body can even fall apart around me. I am still me and I am still inside of me. And that is that thing that I trust and rely on because that is never, never going to change. Mm -hmm. 
And I call that God. Mm -hmm. I call that divine love. Yes. That's what I call um, those things that never wavers. And, and so even though as we're talking and how the day could change or plans get interrupted or things happen that we don't always understand why, um, even what's going on in our world now, uh, we don't understand why. It just is. Um, is is having a strong resolve to something that you know is steady inside of yourself. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it's so important. And, and here's even one step, I think a little bit deeper or on top of that, calling it, you know, God and faith. Yes. It's that steady, unwavering thing, but it's also trusting in our truth that we're worthy of that. Mm -hmm. Because so often people think I'm not worthy of that. Jesus might be there for others, but he's not there for me. He's inside of you. God's inside of you. I don't care if you call it God or spirit or universe or Jesus or purple. <laughs> it's still inside you. Whatever you name it or don't name it, it's still inside of you. And you are worthy no matter what. And it's only when you can focus on that, that then you allow it to expand and to grow. That is so true. So I think that that's a really important piece that people need to get in touch with as they do this work, because you need to find that center inside of yourself, because mm -hmm. that center is what gives you your wholeness. It gives you your passion. It is, it is the light of God, the light of the substance that you're made out of, right? So, so finding that helps, well, for me, it helped me give me courage. It helped make me feel safe to then go and try to do things and things that I was afraid to do because something inside of me was like, you can do this. It's okay. Mm -hmm. You can do this. I made you to do this. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and there's also that, that confidence and that peace around it that you can try it. And even if it doesn't turn out exactly how you think it's going to turn out, the way that it's going to turn out is always divinely perfect when you are connected to the reasons that you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Because, I, I, you know, I don't know about you, but there's times where I will get really frustrated by something and I'll feel, you know, a sense of vindictiveness or something come up and you're like, yeah, I'm there. and then if I tune within, it's like, no, 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 that, that's not your truth. That is your emotion. That is your frustration. And then I know not to act on that. But when I do act based on what I know to be true, even if it's scary, I do know that it's the right things for the right reasons because it's, it's in alignment with that truth. And I know without question that what I'm doing is right, no matter what the outcome is, I, it's that light of God, it's that love, and that action was taken with purpose. And the result has meaning. It might not be the meaning that I knew, but it's working through me for all of the right reasons. And that feels good. That does. That feels great. Yes. That feels really great. And so this is what our journey is about here, right? It's, it's really digging inside and finding out who you are and allowing yourself to be it. To, like you say, sparkle. Yes. Yeah, because there's a lot of things that dull our sparkle. Fear, shame, <laughs> regret, mm -hmm. judgment. All of those things dull that sparkle, that God-given sparkle that's inside all of us that makes us all unique and all different. And it's only by trusting in our truth and removing those layers of ego, judgment, you know, all of those things that dull our sparkle that we can really be all that we are, all that we were created to be. And that's where that whole glory of living comes from. That's really what it's all about. Not only for everybody else and for the good that we create, but also for ourselves. 
totally agree. I totally agree. Well, you know, I have a question for you. You call yourself a life choreographer. Yeah. And so I thought maybe you can explain to people what that is. Oh, absolutely. Obviously, I love dancing. <laughs> but one of the things that I love so much about dancing is as a choreographer, you take the elements of what is and you create a unified, beautiful, cohesive dance. You take the stage, the size of the stage, the costumes, the skill and the talent of the dancers. You know, you take all of these elements and you arrange it into this magical, beautiful dance that creates emotion and passion. And that's what we're doing in our lives. You know, if we're created in the image and likeness of God, God's the ultimate creator and we are the ultimate creators too. And all we have to do is look within and start creating that vision of how we want our life to be. Because we are meant to dance through life. We're not meant to slog and suffer through life. So how can we choreograph the kind of life that we dream of taking into consideration? Yeah, I still have to work for money. Yeah, I have kids at home. I don't have a car that works. My house is doing this. There's all of these factors that are real. You know, we have to do these real life things chop water or chop wood, carry water. We have to do that while we're on earth. How do we do all of those things and choreograph this beautiful life? And that's what I really help people do is take all of that and make it beautiful. Take all of that and help you tune within and glow and sparkle and dance and make your dance unique to you and beautiful to you and powerful to you and have it evoke the exact emotion and feeling that you want it to evoke. Because that's truly what we're here for and what we do day in and day out. And that's the other thing with choreography, the sum total of our minutes make our hours. Our hours make our days, our days make our week, our week make our month, our month makes our life. And instead of being like, oh yeah, someday it's gonna be great and someday I'm gonna enjoy it and someday, it's getting into that minutia, it's finding that five steps of flaunt in every moment and building and creating because you can't choreograph something out of nothing. So it's just taking it down to every breath, choreographing it at every breath and pretty soon, your life is choreographed exactly how it was meant to be. That sounds like fun. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it that, is. That sounds like a lot of fun. This has been such a great conversation and inspiration for people um, that even, even in today, even where our lives are changed so much, you have the ability to step back and say, okay, how can I find more joy in my life? Am I doing my passion? Am I, or, or these uh, fetishes that you're talking about? Did I find, can I find something that brings me so much joy? I can't even imagine not having it as part of my life. Yeah. Finding that thing that helps you fly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. everybody has that. Yeah. Every, it came with you. Yes. It, it came with you. <laughs> you weren't left out. You were, you, you, everybody has um, a passion in their heart, m several passions for all different types of things. So it's really finding what makes your heart sing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And especially now, you know, in a way, mm -hmm. it's such a gift to have life shift around you. It's very uncomfortable to have the rug pulled out from under you. Trust me, I've, I've had that happen and it's awful. And, you know, it's okay to get to that point where you think I can't face another day. I don't know how to get out of bed in the morning. I, I can't carry on. It's okay to be there. Because from that place, that's when the choreography gets good. That's when trusting in your truth has meaning. Because again, it's so easy when times are good to be like, yeah, it's fine. And I trust myself. And aha, uh -huh, my heart says this. It's not until everything external is stripped away that you really go, 
I get it. Rubber meets the road. And now I know what I'm doing. Exactly. Exactly. Laura, thank you so much for joining me tonight. And can you please tell people how to get in touch with you? Oh, absolutely. They can get in touch with me a couple of different ways. My website is Laura, and my name is L-O-R-A, simple spelling, L-O-R-A, Cheadle, C-H-E-A-D-L-E.com. And I've got an amazing bundle of joy um, download if they come to my website with a guided MP3 meditation, a dance, and an intuition worksheet. They can also find me on Facebook. Um, Laura Cheadle, and I also have the Flaunt Flock Facebook group for people going through this process of learning how to flaunt and trusting in their truth, who want to connect with other people who are also on the journey, you know, to have, again, some of those difficult conversations. How do I get over this? <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm across all social and Laura at LauraCheadle.com or LauraCheadle.com. Please reach out. I love chatting. Yes, please do. And you know, um, Laura's going to be on Enlightened World Network tomorrow at three o'clock Eastern time, and she's going to do a meditation for us. So I'm really looking forward to being with you again tomorrow too. I can't wait. I'm really looking forward to that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been really um, a pleasure meeting you and. Uh, all the things that you bring to the world to help other people find their joy. So thank you. You're thank welcome. You. It's been a pleasure meeting you too. It's been really a, a soulful connection right off the bat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I agree. I agree. So what I'm going to say is when in doubt, never underestimate the power of prayer. You are being listened to and heard throughout the universe, and it always responds with infinite and eternal love. Remember to go inside and listen through your heart for the whispers of heaven. God bless you, and I love you. Bye-bye. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. You can check out who's on, when we're on, and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. Powered by love, Angel Heart Radio is brought to you by angellight777.com. The views and opinions expressed by Angel Heart Radio hosts, guests, co-hosts and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.